All right, so we're now going to go into lesson one, step two, and we're at a place where we just have a basic figure facing forward, no clothing added. So now we're gonna start adding clothing and details. This is the part where you call your client and you make sure that you know what they want this figure to be wearing. You wanna ask how they envision the hairstyle. If they wanna let you have free reign, that's totally fine. But um, you should be asking them what, you know, do you want the hair down? Do you want the hair up? How do you envision this girl looking? Um, do they envision her being super smiley or let, you know, very little focus on the face? Um, the client will send you photos of the clothing. Uh, so it's really important that you know how clothing lays on a body. But even if you're just beginning, it's pretty easy to draw right on. If you're just practicing and you don't have a client giving you this assignment, grab a magazine flip it open and just pick an outfit and draw it. I'm gonna keep it really simple for you today and we'll put her in a basic pencil skirt and a short sleeve top just so that you can see how it will, how you draw it on the body. What we're gonna do is start with just a regular shirt. What we've already done is added the basic details. So even if it's your first time drawing clothing, it's gonna be pretty easy. The shirt should fit exactly how it should fit you. So a rounded collar is absolutely fine and you can see where that would lay on your neck and buttons, uh, pretty simply done. You just kind of add them where you see them. We will give her maybe short sleeves and if you can see, I'm keeping the lines extremely sketchy. You can do this at this stage. You wanna look when the client sends you the picture and see exactly where on the arm it's hitting because uh, while we're exaggerating all of this on a fashion illustration, the client wants to, you know, you to show them how things are going to fit. So right here, we're just gonna give her a really cool collar and maybe we'll give her um, maybe a bow too. So, just draw in a very simple shirt for this step. And this was the original waistline, so that's where you would tuck it in. If you weren't going to tuck that in, you can bring it down to wherever it hits on the waist. Here, we're just gonna add this for now, and we'll put her in a pencil skirt. If it's a fitted skirt, you follow the lines. Very easy. So it would, be fit, it would fit right against her hips. And watch in the client's photo and see how far that skirt comes down and you just add, add that in. You follow the lines that you already have in step one. So this step is pretty easy. Now, as you start practicing, you know, sometimes clients will give you gowns and uh, you wanna give those a lot of movement and that will come with practice. But for now, we're gonna keep it basic and simple for you. With the legs, we're gonna kind of add that detail in after the clothing but I always just hop down to shoes at the bottom. Um, for me, I usually just make up whatever shoes look good, but sometimes the client will have a specific shoe in mind. So I think we're just gonna give her some pointy heels and um, we'll kind of figure that part out later, but you just wanna make them pointed and then decide if you want anything around the ankles and we'll clean all of this stuff up at a later time as well. If the client is pushing accessories, you can feel free to add them to her hands. And if they're not, that's something that you definitely wanna make sure that you're asking people. Does she have a bag? Should she have jewelry on? Some clients will absolutely love this and some will tell you that it's far too distracting. And in the end, it's not up to you, it's up to the client. So uh, even if you don't agree, just listen and do what they tell you. <laughs> that's about it for this girl, we will put all of the focus, I guess, on all of her one hand. So we'll maybe add some bracelets. Um, and now she's really starting to kind of come together. The last thing that we're gonna do is add just some hairlines and some detail to her face. Um, I usually kind of put two little marks in where her ears would be. And you won't really see these, but uh, from here you wanna come up and think about where the hairline would be. This is very exaggerated. Her head at this point should start to look like those sketches of aliens. That's how you know you're doing it right. Um, 
you want to bring this up a little bit higher than where the forehead's going to be. And you can just kind of, I like to add a lot of movement to the hair. So, but you can put in any hairstyle you want. I mean, it can just be straight and shoulder length and blunt here, or uh, you can bring it all the way down. Just kind of follow alongside the head where it would fall. And then I like to kind of suggest that it's going this way. Uh, but you can, you can keep it very simple and just do a line here and just keep it straight and short. Um, you're gonna bring it down a little bit in the front as well, just so it frames her face. And now at least there's a suggestion of where the hair is going to go. This will all be shaded in back here. These two guidelines that I put in earlier are to help me figure out where the eyes and nose and mouth are going to go. I like to put as little focus on the face of the fashion illustration as possible, unless the su suggestion is from the client that they really want a detailed face. So if this is the head, let's talk about why we added those guidelines. You start with a circle about the size of a quarter. You bring this down, bring two lines down. Just follow the outside line of that circle. Bring it right down here and meet. Now it's starting to look like an egg. And these are the guidelines. So you put one that cuts that in half, and then you draw a second one that'll slice it in half again. You don't need these guidelines, but it's great for a beginner. It tells you that the eyes should go in these spaces, the nose should go down here, and the mouth should go here. It just helps you figure out where everything is placed, and eyebrows will always go above. Easy peasy and then you can add details after everything is in. So we're gonna go back to our girl. That means that her eyes will go somewhere near here, her eyebrows will go somewhere above, and we'll give her a nose and just a suggestion of some lips. We can actually add this in. We have to clean all these other lines up, but right now we have an idea of at least where they should be. And this is as far as you really wanna take it before checking in with your client. Um, I like to add a little bit of a suggestion to the eyes just so the client can kind of get a feel of what our person is starting to look like. And at this step, we're gonna do some cleanup because you don't want to show this to the client with lines and crazy things um, through her face. So what you'll do is erase the majority of lines. So the one that cuts through her head will need to go. And you don't need to push too hard because the nice thing about watercolor artwork is sometimes you'll kind of still see the suggestion of the lines and that's totally fine. But for the most part at this stage, you want to kind of erase those, clean those up, get in here and take out the lines that are in her neck. And this I like to leave a little bit of because we put a guideline here where her chest is. This is actually where the clothing will fold naturally. So I do leave that in usually. And then I kind of clean up the guidelines underneath the skirt because she should not be wearing anything see-through. And I mean, you definitely wanna make sure you take some time and really get in here. I switched out erasers because this pencil has a black eraser on it. And sometimes if you're using a black eraser, it can leave all of these smudge lines. So I switch over to a new eraser. Um, just a pink one is fine or white. And I actually suggest not using a large one but using the one on the back of a pencil because you can actually get into corners a lot better. Something that we really need to do is clean up before you erase, just clean up the outlines of the legs. It's already there for you. We're just adding it in. And then you very lightly want to take this out. I leave a lot of these in because I do want to know where her knees are. And I like the suggestion of a little bit of a line as well. And then you can get right in here to the shoes. So the nice part is, is that 
you can always change anything at this point. Take out a little bit of the guideline in her hands and that's about it for this stage. I go back in at this point and just clean up a tiny bit after I erase because this is the stage that you're going to send to your client. It's important that you send it to them and you tell them this is the last time that they can make changes. Uh, if they want you to start over, that's fine. You can still do it at this point. But once the watercolor is added, you can't erase that. So send it to them and talk to them and see what they think. You should have already talked to them at this point. So none of what they're about to get, you know, in a scan in their email should be a surprise. You know, you should have already decided how, what she's wearing and what the hair length is. So at this point, we're not sending them anything that's a surprise. We're just kind of sending them details and it's still looking really, really sketchy. And then they'll tell you what they want added or changed. I like to make sure that you like it at this point. So if you don't like what she's looking like right now, I would probably start again because you want it to be in a place that both the client likes it and you like what you're up to. So this is what she's starting to look like. I'm gonna actually just finish clean up, um, add a few more details before I scan it over to the client. But for the most part, this is the end of lesson one, part two.